what is up guys from seed to stone here and in this episode we'll be following these cheese and jack hair cannabis plants through week number 11. in this week's video i'll talk about how harvesting your plants at the correct time not only affects your quality but overall yields and finally the cheese autos get chopped down and i get to install some new equipment into the tent As unexpected as this grow was, it is shaped up to be one of my best auto grows to date. Although I'm confident that this will be one of the highest yielding seasons so far, there's also a lot to be said about the quality of their buds. These ladies packed on a ton of weight, are rock hard dense and are covered in trichomes from top to bottom. Their smell has to be one of the best things about them. Their funky cheese aroma is very prominent and while up close, a slight acidic aroma is noticed that resembles the smell of a batch of concentrates. I've waited over 11 weeks for these ladies to finish but the true question is, how do I know when they're ready to harvest? There are a ton of different methods you can use. A handful of old school growers base their harvest by counting how many weeks into flower they are, while others harvest purely based on the color of their pistols. But what if I told you there is a much more effective way to know for sure? I've talked a lot about genetics and phenotypes this season. If there's one thing that you've probably learned by now, it's that all plants are different. While certain strains can flower in 6 weeks, others can take up to 10 weeks. And on some strains, the pistols will change color by the time you harvest, others will stay completely white even if they're ready to be chopped. With so many different possible variations, the one method you can always rely on is checking the trichomes. Trichomes actually change color and clarity as they mature. If the trichomes are still clear, it's a good sign that your plants are not ready. If they're all milky, then that's a sign that your plants are currently at their highest levels of THC. Finally, as trichomes start to amber, this is a sign that your plants THC levels are decreasing and CBD levels are increasing. Unfortunately, these little trichomes are incredibly small and it makes them difficult to see by the naked eye. I've had trichomes that look clear in person actually be cloudy when magnified. Thankfully, there are a few tricks that you can use to better view the trichomes. The tool that I use is called the jeweler's loop. Jeweler's loops are designed to spot imperfections in diamonds and other small bits of jewelry. Most offer 30 times magnification and others even greater amounts. The one that I use offers two, a 30 times lens and a 60 times lens. I'll leave the links to it in the description. It's cheap, well built, and also has two separate assisting lights which makes viewing the trichomes much easier. Giving your gals the right time they need in order to fully mature will not only increase the quality, but it'll also give them the perfect time that they need to fatten up. Plants can really pack on a ton of weight in their last few weeks. I recommend harvesting sativas when 30% of their trichomes have turned amber, with the rest being cloudy, and for indicas I recommend a 20-80 ratio, but at the very least, wait until they are all completely cloudy. This week my cheese not only reached optimal ripeness, but they also completed their 8 day nutrient flush, which has left their fan leaves faded and free of residual nutrients. Flushing clears the medium of any lingering food and allows the plant to work on what's already stored inside of itself. This gives you a better burning, tasting, and overall a less harsh product after your cure is done. I chopped all four of these ladies down this week, but I'll be going into more detail about my complete harvest methods once these four have been properly dried, trimmed, and jarred. I'm thinking about live streaming for a couple hours while I trim, so if you guys would be interested in that, please let me know and I'll set it up. Thanks for checking out my grow series. If you guys like this video so far, make sure to press that button below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know. Add me up on Snapchat for a behind the scenes look and other exclusive content. Visit the merch store to rep and support your favorite growing channel. And if you guys haven't yet subscribed, make sure to do so now and turn on notifications. Now let's get back to it.
Chi's now removed from the tent, it's time to focus on creating the best possible environment for the jacks, which are now just starting to flower. Last week I talked a lot about creating the proper environments for your plants between veg and flower. With these four now just starting to finish up, I thought I'd further the work in here. Although my humidity levels got a lot better with the work I did last week, I wanted to try to create an even more perfect environment for these ladies. As of right now, my RH level is a tad bit high. It's sitting at about 55% RH. I want to try to lower that down to about 35-40%. to 40%. So I ended up getting a brand new dehumidifier which is better suited for my 4 by 8 grow tent than the one that I used previously that was more budget friendly. I'll link both in the description of this video, but keep in mind the smaller one might struggle depending on the size of your grow space, so maybe even consider picking up a few of them. To better monitor my RH levels and also control my dehu, I picked up this sweet little humidity controller as well. It also offers temperature control which can be used to turn on and off your heaters and air conditioning units. This brand also has a more budget friendly option that I'll also link in the description as well. To start, I placed the dehumidifier in the tent. Once installed, I hook up the humidity monitor and program it to kick on my dehu if the levels reach over 40%. I attach the moisture probe right next to my temperature probe. Now that these ladies have a better overall environment, it's going to be interesting to see how they react in the different stages of flower. These girls are now just starting to form small buds all over their branches. Although they have stretched up a good amount this week, thankfully it looks like they've started to finally slow down. Space is limited so I raised my lights as high as it could go, which should help out. Either this coming week or the next week, I'll be giving these ladies another major haircut as their canopy is very thick underneath. This won't just help with light penetration, but it's also going to help reduce the humidity levels as well. I hope you guys are stoked to see these plants finish up. I know that I am. I'm already starting to plan this next growth, so if there are any strains in specific that you'd like to see, feel free to let me know. I still really want to try a strain that gets nice and purple come harvest time. Thank you to everyone who joined up to Patreon this week. I'd also like to recognize this week's Bloom Level supporters, Charlie D, Andrew C, and our second official Harvest Level supporter, Jamal R. Welcome to all of you and thanks for supporting the channel. If you guys would like to not only support the channel, but get one-on-one -on -one help with growing, setting up gear, and also interact with other patrons inside the community, check out my page at patreon.com forward slash from seed to stone. The last thing that I want to talk about is I've been getting tons of reports that weed channels are starting to get deleted again. I try my hardest to adhere to YouTube's guidelines, but make sure to have at least one of my other accounts added just in case if this channel comes under fire. I'll have links to my Instagram, Snapchat, and my backup YouTube channel in the description of this video. Anyways guys, I'll see you in two days for our White Widow Budget Auto Grow. As always, happy growing.